Hey, and welcome back. It is the Marketer of the Day podcast. Courtney Baker is here. She is the CMO of Known Well, and she is the host of the AI Know How podcast. And Courtney has led the transformation from a company called Full Focus from a personality driven to a product led brand. And now, Courtney deploys her craft and on how AI gets deployed in business. Her website is knownwell.com. She has an excellent podcast, and we are going to find out some secrets about AI, client intelligence, so much more. So, Courtney, glad to be speaking with you. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Excited to have you. And so, we speaking of excitement, we hyped you up a little bit for the audience, <laughs> read your bio, but in your own words, what has you fired up? What are you super excited about lately? Well, I mean, obviously AI is all the hype is about AI, but I think some of that hype is very legitimate. I think we are at a point in history that is a really special time to be in business and really having to figure out how we're going to deploy AI in a really way that elevates humanity that really elevates humanity and elevates our businesses. And so I think that's a really exciting thing. Of course, we've got to do it well, um, but it's one of those moments. It's kind of like at the end of the game uh, in a tight basketball match, you know, I want to have the ball in my hands to go make that last shot. And I, I think for a lot of business leaders, we're thinking about AI that way as well of, okay, we can, we've learned um, over the last couple of decades of other digital transformations to kind of prepare us for this time. And I, I personally think it's an exciting time. I agree. It is a tool to be used properly, especially when you think about like chat GPT took up all of the, the attention about the possibilities of AI, even though AI has been around for years, right? Amazon's right. been using it, voice recognition, yeah. but like chat GPT stole the spotlight and those that first year or so, it sure put out some garbage text, didn't it? And you can <laughs> almost like see if it's chat GPT generated. And like, you know, we're both podcasters. I'm sure you get pitches for guests and I get all these like AI written pitches and I'm just like, okay, I can tell it's AI. I'll skim it. I guess, I guess I'll still take the person because I, I get what they meant to say. And then I'm also excited <laughs> about, for example, like following up with guests, right? I have 1200 right. guests and I just go Ch -ch 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 and get all this stuff cranked out, get all these sort of personalized messages. But I still say like, okay, well, I'll go and I'll, I'll add my humanness to it. And then, but I'll yeah. still, the end result will be like 10x, 20x productivity in the end. So, but I'm always like kind of navigating this very delicate balance between, well, I, I don't want to get left behind. I want to be productive, but I also don't want to just crank out a bunch of garbage articles, right. garbage follow-ups. I want to use this tool properly. And so to help us understand what this known well tool is, my understanding is it, it like helps you deal with your customers and clients. Is that right? That's exactly right. Um, we, when we launched Known Well, we had hundreds of conversations with professional service leaders. And, you know, if you think about a really small, let's just say a marketing firm or a small technology service firm, you usually have somebody in that company that is just really good at sitting in the middle of all of the customer interactions. You know, they're in the meetings, they see the emails, but they're really good at just intuitively being like, hey, I think something's up with the Frost account. And I think we should get our CEO to go have a conversation with their CEO. The problem is with professional service companies, you know, it's high touch relationships, lots of relationships with lots of relationships on the other side. And as a professional service company starts to scale, that person sitting in the middle of all those different interactions and being able to intuit what needs to happen starts to break down. It becomes impossible as you scale. And so what we started to build at Knownwell was, well, now we have AI that can actually sit in the middle of all of that communication exhaust, all the structured data, the external data, and actually help prompt as humans, like, hey, there's something going on with this account that you need to be aware of and really spur that action that way. And so we think it's going to be game changing for professional service companies um, because unlike SaaS or e-commerce that have all that rich transactional data, you just don't have that on the professional service side. You have rich uh, relationships. Um, and so we're really excited to 
um, deploy our technology into those companies. And again, the whole premise is using the technology to actually elevate what only the human can do, which is be in relationship with other humans. I love it. Clone yourself in a way and looking at the parts of your business that would not normally scale without AI and using it to do a better job. And so when you talk about exactly. professional service companies, what industries are that? Because I, I feel like I, I might know what that means, but I want to be sure. Yeah. Yeah. For our for our company, the the ideal fit is really uh, those professional service companies that have a reoccurring structure and are really focused on executing on behalf of a company. You know, they're an extension of the company that they're serving. So it's marketing firms, it's accounting services, financial services, it's technology services, uh, those types of companies within that broader bucket of professional services are the ones that we've built this product for. Wonderful. And so my next kind of item in the mental agenda is understanding the user story. And so say you have some accounting firm, marketing firm, and they're using your tool, where does the data come from? Is it like looking at the, the email, the communication, like what yeah. are the inputs and outputs? Exactly. That's a great question. And so a lot of times we don't think of our email or Zoom calls as data, but they actually are. They're actually incredibly rich data sources for our companies. And so for KnownWell, what we do is we bring in all of your email, all of your Slack, uh, whatever your communication channels are, uh, as well as any video um, technology that you're using with your meetings and with your clients. Um, and then all of your structured data that already exists today, like your CRM, and then external data to really feed the intelligence. You know, we believe that in the future, our companies will really have an intelligence that sits in the middle of the organization. Uh, you know, a lot of times now you might think of your CRM being the hub of the organization and really being the uh, record keeper of what's happening with clients. But in a lot of ways, it is just a record of what has happened. And what we're moving to is these intelligence that can actually help us see what might happen based on all the inputs. It's again, what a human does in that small firm of just being able to intuit from all these different pieces and say, hey, I, something's going on with that account. Uh, we're really moving towards this more proactive intelligence at the hub of our organizations. Very nice. You're onto something. You're onto a fun mission. So instead of using the CRM to look at the past, you have AI to predict more of the future. And any of us that has a roster of clients understands the pain of 80-20, where you have <laughs> that 20% of clients that are just kind of problematic in one way or another. And it would be good to know where to focus our attention, what to work on, what to fix. That way, like the, the lookalike of our ideal clients is replicated in that way. And so help us understand, like, do you ha who's using this? Like, do you have yeah. like a fun case study of someone that like plugged in all this data, email, Zoom calls, structured data, CRM, all that, put it together and gave them some kind of insights to change their trajectory? Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, one thing that we've built this for is not just account managers on the ground, which it certainly will help them, you know, like you said, not just let... Uh, email dictate what they're doing today or, or which customer is yelling the loudest, but really help them prioritize what actions they should take. But all the way up to the very senior leaders in the organization of actually being able to get that those insights and that intelligence across the entire portfolio. So some of those, sometimes it's hard to see um, through the forest, actually see, oh man, there are connection points across the organization that, hey, if we fix this thing operationally, we could really get, um, we could really move the needle in our business. And those things we're really excited about um, as well. And what kind of missing connections are showing up? Yeah, well, here's one great example, one use case from one of our customers. They have an existing company. They've acquired a new business. So right now, when you talk to professional service firms, even highly successful ones, what's happening is their account managers are going customer by customer and marking it red, yellow, green. 
Um, I've heard it over and over again. And that is highly subjective and manual and delayed. You know, it's basically a um, subjective outcome of what they feel like is happening in the relationship. Um, but they have acquired another company. And there's a lot, you know, even with it being subjective, you've now got a different company that, you know, the way that they intuit different things, their red, yellow, green may be highly different than the existing company. And so having known well across all of those um, individuals across those two companies that are coming together has been a huge win for them because they are able to see very quickly how uh, they're doing in one side of the organization versus the other side of the organization. It basically gives this objective, real-time look at what's happening and where they need to deploy resources. And do you have any sort of fun surprises to share along these lines? Because that's always where the fun is, right? As you say, well, I, I feed it in my data and I have my expectations about where to deploy my resources or what to do differently. But sometimes the AI it has like a kind of a magic black box effect on it. So what have you seen or what have your customers seen about just the unexpected surprises using this tool? You know, one thing that... I, it, it may not be exactly what you're asking, but I've seen it multiple times where mainly CEOs in this, these organizations, um, when they get in and they see what uh, Knownwell is producing, these insights, it's almost immediate that they're like, oh man, we need to do something about that. We can fix that by X, Y, and Z. But because the, it wasn't ever surfaced to them, they just weren't able to see it in a way that they could problem solve it. Um, and so over and over again, things as simple as um, uh, basically a process issue with something not getting there in delayed time. You know, the CEO is able to see that really quickly and, and problem solve it uh, in real time, which has been incredible to see. Um, that's happened multiple times against multiple use cases of, just seeing the intelligence in a really objective way um, has helped them really look at how am I going to drive this business forward and drive their strategy differently. And that seems to be a recurring theme in our conversation here, the, the human bias of the, well, you have your judgment, someone else has this judgment, yeah. you acquire some company and whatever was brought along, they have their own kind of judgment. It helps to have that objectivity. And then also... I mean, people are weird about receiving advice and who the advice comes from. And you have to be careful about like presenting and selling your idea, getting someone on board. But if you say, hey, the, the, the cold, hard tool, the computer cloud machine says, here's our conclusions, that in a way that's a little easier to take because you're saying, well, it's, it's data driven, not necessarily on feelings or opinions. That might be a little better way to get the message across to act differently. And you're also mentioning about acting in a timely fashion, right? Using this real-time right. data, doing making the change before the problem's bigger, before you lose the client, before the budget's wrong. And that's some really exciting stuff. And so uh, as you know, uh, being a business owner is hard, right? And building something right. and getting people to use it. So I'm curious about your uh, awkward growing pains. So has there been difficulty in getting the product work or getting the word out? Like what sort of struggles have you personally gone through getting known well on board with people and companies? Yeah, that's a great question. And I mean, as someone, this was actually my first time in a startup from zero to one. And it's a unique season. So if you've never experienced it, um, well, I, you know, even as I say that, it's not for everyone because it is a unique journey. And some people might call it throwing spaghetti at the wall. But in so many ways, it's so experimental of really trying to hone in on who your ICP is. And then that constant experimental mindset of developing messages and really understanding your customer uh, in a way to find things that resonate or not. And that or not is really powerful as well. And so, you know, that is, it's hard. It's hard going from zero to one. Uh, that's why it's, it's a fun journey, but it's not for everybody. And I would say experiencing that for the first time 
it is that mental resiliency over and over again of when something doesn't work the way that you thought it would to have the stamina to keep pushing ahead. Um, and so, yes, certainly times that we've tried things that didn't work, um, times that we've thought something didn't work, that all of a sudden, you know, a new, you know, change in the audience, all of a sudden it, it does work. Um, and just sticking with it um, over time and really keeping track of those adjustments that we're making um, until we get to the point that we start to see traction. And we've been in a really great season of, uh, of of selling new customers right in our ICP that we're really excited about. Well, you're you're mentioning something here that I probably forget about once a month, and then remember again and forget <laughs> again, which is this idea of that your customers are people and that they have their own needs, and we need to kind of recurringly think about their fears and frustrations and what interest them and what gets them to take action. And it's it's re really easy to fall back on making your product really good, which is important, but like that's not the focus, right? Or yeah. on your, your marketing, your messaging, but sometimes that's hit or miss. And so you're saying that sometimes if it's uh, maybe like this feature that really excites you, doesn't excite them, or maybe it needs to be developed better or presented better or the timing's not right. And so instead of driving ourselves crazy, you think, well, who are these people that I'm trying to help? And perhaps that helps to motivate you through the frustrations when things don't always yeah. go the way you want. And let, let's let's be real. It's life. You you always have a, an unexpected this happening all the time. But you're like, well, who am I seeking to help and serve? And where are they stuck without me? And now my solution can get them there. And everyone will be happy once we solve some of these hard problems, but there's a reward after we're uh, getting to the other side. And so speaking of getting to that other side, what are you working on now? What's the, the current like personal challenge or what's your, your business striving to as far as like new customers, new features, just what's happening headed towards the future? Yeah, we're really, uh, we just closed our seed round in September. And so we're really excited about having um, that influx of funding and really being able to build out the product to the next level. And, you know, unlike a lot of AI tools, and there's so many right now, and they're great, um, but most of them are for individual productivity. And hopefully, as um, you've probably caught on, what we're building at Knownwell is not at that execution level. It's at the operation level of the organization. And so it, it really hits on how do we work together. And I think there's going to be more and more tools that you'll see uh, native AI technology at that level, which is exciting. Um, but I think we're one of those companies. And so we're really excited about deploying more of our operational insights um, within organizations and deploying more of turning those intelligence, those insights into action inside these companies. Um, and so that's that's what we're building right now and uh, working with our early access customers on. Um, and I would say for me personally, in, and I think this is good for all of us marketers, <laughs> when things get tough or we get stuck, getting with our customers can unlock so much. Uh, matter of fact, when you were talking just a moment ago, I there's a piece of our product that is a relationship map. It's kind of almost like a heat map for your relationships and uh, the, the uh, customer, all the relationships within your customer. And it just shows the health of each one of those uh, different connections. And I, I honestly, when I saw it in our product, I was like, oh, this is cool. But our customers loved it. Um, because they are so mindful in professional services, people is what what their business is. You know, it's people serving companies, and so. But had I not been on that a call with a customer to see them like, oh wow, this is amazing, um, I wouldn't have known that. So just a note uh, for all of us, like it's so helpful to get with our customers and just hear from them specifically uh, to help us drive uh, and get get unstuck, get to the next level. That's powerful too, because uh, like yeah, I was thinking about the like motivation terms, but you're saying also just to get those insights and to see what makes your customers come alive. And yeah. in 
in tech and programming, that's huge, right? Looking over your customer's shoulder and just seeing what what they do or if they're trying to find some menu or you're like, hey, I didn't even know people use that feature. And, and that's right. huge. And it's, these are some great insights. And just it's it's easy to not know or forget or to ignore some of this fundamental advice, but that's what will uh, get us through and, and get us to some of these goals and, and you know, ha have us build the company of our dreams. And so exactly. in our last few minutes here, uh, I'm always looking for, okay, like my, my guests came here and they, they have all these things, they have all the, these uh, interesting stories and advice, but sometimes I don't know exactly the right question to ask. So in our conversation here, Courtney, is there like a missing hidden invisible question? Is there something that you wish I would ask you, but I just don't know to ask it. Um, you know, I will phrase it like this. I think there is having an understanding of where we are in the AI journey, uh, where we are at with the technology, where in whatever business you're in, at whatever level, is incredibly powerful. And so I would that's more the answer to the question you, you that I think might be helpful for people is just to understand we are at the very beginning and really starting to understand where the technology is going to go. For example, you know, I mentioned earlier of moving up to that operations level in a business. You know, we've been in the um really the execution level with things like chat GPT and coding tools. I, I mean, there's <laughs> innumerable at this point, but understanding the levels of business and how AI is going to be deployed as, as the technology progresses is incredibly powerful. I agree. That's helpful to think about. What are those marketplace cycles? What is it going to yep. evolve into? Where is it going to be used? How is it going to mature? It's enough to drive someone crazy, but that's why we need to be informed over time and not have to play catch up. It's never fun exactly. to cram for a test, but if you just do a little bit of studying over time and seeing what interests you, what your competitors are doing, what you can tap into, then that's a, a helpful dose over time to just help us to, to stay informed, to stay up to date. So that way our companies don't get left behind with AI. That way we know that these amazing tools such as Known Well exist and that we can tune into your podcast as well. That way we can just stay up to date on what's happening with AI. And so speaking to that, we're at the point on the show where we're saying, okay, well, uh, Courtney had some great advice. Known Well sounds amazing. She gave me a, a little bit of a, some homework assignments thing to think about in my own business, but that only gets us so far, right? That only gives us a little bit of a taste. So to find out more about you and your company and your podcast and Known Well and just any other next steps, what should uh, an eager, engaged podcast listener do at this point? Where should they go to find out more about you and what you have going on? Yeah, well, you can find us at knownwell.com. And specifically, I'd love to point you towards a demo of what we're building of our platform. Um, our team would love to talk to you, if nothing else, to get your feedback on what we're building. So again, you can do that at knownwell.com. And our podcast is called AI Know How. It's really for executives and helping break down um, how to think about AI in your business. And you can find me personally at LinkedIn at Court Baker. Very nice. So that is knownwell.com, K-N-O-W-N-W-E-L-L.com. I'm sure you're a podcaster. You spell things out. Once I start spelling, I'm like, oh, I hope I don't mess a letter here. <laughs> knownwell.com. And then the AI known or AI Know How podcast. Yes. And then Courtney Baker on LinkedIn. And so as we're checking out those resources, as we're going there, again, podcasting inside baseball, it's always nice to have the, the reels, the clips. And so this is where I ask my guest about a fun quote or lesson that has helped them in their life or their business that they can pass on to us. So for viral clip reel purposes, Courtney Baker, what is a fun quote or lesson that has served you that you can pass on to us? I would say whatever level of the organization you're in right now, you need to be setting time aside to get your hands on these AI tools. And this is probably specifically for executives, because if you're on the ground, you may be already doing that. But if you're an executive, make sure that you're also setting time each week to get your hands on these tools so that as the technology progresses, you understand the capabilities. 
Very nice advice. Stay informed, get your hands on these tools, experiment, play around, get some results, because another tool will come along in a few weeks or months, and that way you can just get in this good habit, especially, as you said, at the executive level of knowing what's possible, knowing what your business should be doing. And the next step to get informed is, as we said, go to knownwell.com. Go there, get that demo scheduled. That way you can play around, use that tool, watch a video, see how it's done. And then the AI Know How podcast, because AI has changed so much in these last few years. Who knows where it's going? Who knows what will be possible in the, in the, the coming decades? Our brains can't even imagine, <laughs> but you can find out from Courtney and her company and her team, knowwell.com, AI Know How podcast. Very nice speaking with you today, Courtney. You too. Thanks for having me.